Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and let's discuss a few more updates about that unusual discovery, or I guess unusual announcement, in regards to several stars discovered right here in the Milky Way galaxy that seem to display signs of what's expected from a typical Dyson sphere, or basically showing us so-called technosignatures, signatures, which is something you can learn more about in a previous video you can find in the description, where I basically discuss these unusual stars 53 stars discovered by two separate studies that seem to possess these unusual signs. Although to be more exact, those signs were just infrared light, and specifically the excess infrared light that's sometimes expected as one of the potential signs from some kind of a megastructure covering a star. Or I guess just to rephrase this, if some kind of a super advanced alien civilization built a Dyson sphere or a Dyson swarm around a star, is going to be producing a lot of residual energy that's going to be emitted at certain infrared frequencies. And this was actually proposed decades ago by the mathematician Freeman Dyson, who thought of this concept early on, assuming the existence of type 2 civilizations that would suddenly require so much energy that they have to capture all of this energy directly from the star. And so by looking at millions and millions of candidates in the Milky Way galaxy, and by looking at specific properties, especially infrared light, the researchers identified 53 interesting stars and 7 very interesting candidates. And it's actually these candidates that everyone is now talking about. Their names, their distance, and their overall location are listed on Wikipedia, and you can see them right here, with most of them about 500 to 900 light years away from us. And all of this is technically part of the project known as Hephaestos. You can find their website in the description below, but as the title here says, searching for extraterrestrial intelligence using indirect signatures of astro-engineering. So basically this is literally a project that tries to find various techno-signatures from super-advanced civilizations. This is actually a project from Sweden, mostly conducted by the team from the Uppsala University. And so this was basically one of their recent studies. But naturally, even the scientists themselves, despite this being an exciting discovery, are still very cautious about the results. And so the overall conclusion in the study is that, well, even though there could be natural explanations, right now we don't actually have something that explains all seven, and additional observations are required in order to find out what's producing this extra heat. But the conclusion in the study also stresses something really important. Even though these objects resemble Dyson swarms, it would be very premature to assume that they are Dyson swarms. Mostly because a lot of this data is actually not super high in terms of quality. And so lots and lots of additional observations, and most importantly, more accurate observations, are required to confirm all of this. Because as it happened in the past, even the distances here are actually not super accurate. You can see this from Wikipedia, where for some of these stars, even the distance is up to plus minus 20 light years. But nevertheless, these unusual 7 stars now got a lot of SETI scientists super excited. Even more excited than that star we've talked about previously a few years back, sometimes referred to as the Tabby star. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, let's discuss some of the new discoveries and I guess more negative discoveries in regards to some of these stars and find out what's actually happening here. And so here we have a new study that just came out a few days ago, or basically like two weeks after the original study, that potentially explains at least three of these stars, basically using natural phenomena that are pretty well known and we know produce these emissions. You can find the study in the description below, but in essence the title says everything. Background contamination. And in order to conduct this, the scientists just had to do one thing. Take a look at these objects using very different frequencies and try to see if there's anything else here that was previously invisible. And so here, even though the original study used the observations from the WISE telescope using infrared light and the 2MASS using optical light, they didn't actually take a look at this using radio light. And so the infrared light was definitely detected by other telescopes, but now this team also used Very Large Array Sky Survey, VLAS, and also data from additional radio surveys to see if there's anything else here in terms of radio frequencies. But not really to look for radio transmissions or aliens trying to call us, asking what's up and so on, but to see if there's anything else here that could actually have been hidden from optical telescopes. Specifically, they focused on any radio source within approximately 10 arc seconds, because this would definitely produce contamination. And though for most of them they found nothing so far, A, B and G candidates actually did have a radio source. 
You can see all three of them right here, with the G candidate having several in the same location. Ok, cool cool cool, so what does this mean, right? Well, it turns out this kinda gives us the possible answer for how these emissions were formed. Out of seven of these stars, it looks like three of them are extremely unlikely to be Dyson spheres because these heat emissions are not coming from the stars themselves. But instead is maybe coming from some kind of a source similar to what you see right here, which is a very well known phenomenon. These are actually known as hot dogs. Hot, dust obscured galaxies. And they're actually very difficult to find, but they do produce very unique infrared emissions. And so technically this is actually a quasar that has a lot of dust around it, with all of this dust heated up by the black hole's emissions, making this galaxy glow in the infrared light, with some other similar galaxies, such as infrared luminous galaxies, producing very similar effects as well, but also usually other frequencies we can normally detect. But because there is so much dust here, most of the other light is usually blocked. And today it's actually believed that these unusual galaxies is a kind of an evolutionary process where the central black hole consumes material extremely fast, even faster than the star formation, and is technically in a process of clearing all of this dust away, eventually making this galaxy visible. And we've only known about these objects for less than 14 years. The first one was found in 2010 by actually the same survey, the UY survey, used in this particular study, and only one out of 3000 quasars is usually a hot dog. And so in essence, at least three of these objects discovered by this particular survey could have been contaminated by these distant, could have been contaminated by either one of these hot dogs that we never knew existed, which is quite possible by the way, or a similar galaxy that could be visible using additional observations. But basically right now this does look like a very solid explanation for at least three of these stars. Naturally, additional confirmation would be required by very likely using something else, like for example the James Webb Space Telescope, which can definitely tell us if this is coming from the galaxy, but because these candidates are visible in radio light and very likely contain some kind of a jet as well, this would definitely produce enough contamination to make it appear as if it's actually coming from the star. And so essentially these three stars are just in front of these very unusual, very powerful objects. But this is obviously still very preliminary, and actually this paper is super short, mostly because these are very preliminary observations, and so additional radio observations and additional observations in the infrared light would definitely be required to find out if this is coming from a galaxy or from a star after all. Just to give you a comparison, here's roughly what one of these candidates looks like in infrared, and here's an observation of one of these hot dog galaxies using very very similar frequencies. And so here you can tell that, yeah, they're very similar. And so if these galaxies are really in that location, that would most likely clarify three of these stars. Ok, what about the other four? Well, right now there's nothing yet, definitely no additional radio observations at least, but I'm sure they're coming soon. I'm actually pretty sure a lot of scientists are currently focusing on this, basically trying to find natural explanations because, yeah, let's just be honest here, it's extremely extremely unlikely to be a Dyson sphere. As a matter of fact, out of all techno signatures, I don't even think Dyson spheres would be the best to look for. I mean, for example, how do you even make a Dyson sphere? How would we make one right here in the solar system? Do we just basically start digging Mercury and take it apart piece by piece, trying to place it in orbit around the Sun? Or do we bring asteroids from the asteroid belt? So yeah, even for a type 2 civilization, there will be a lot of challenges in trying to figure out the logistics. And so maybe Dyson spheres are not really what we should be looking for at all. Instead there are actually so many better alternatives, and some of them we've discussed in some of the videos in the description. I think my personal favorite one is referred to as the Clark Belt. And it's named that after the iconic Arthur C. Clarke. It's basically a geostationary orbit belt. Here we can kind of assume that advanced civilizations, spacefaring civilizations, will probably start using geostationary orbit of their own planet. And just like around planet Earth, it's probably going to have a lot of stuff in that orbit, which would be extremely difficult to achieve naturally. And so by finding such a belt around a distant terrestrial planet, which by the way is not that difficult because they would kind of resemble a typical ring set, if we were observing a planet visible as a tiny shadow passing in front of a star, this would kind of confirm the existence of something really intriguing, making this a telltale sign that something really strange is going on here, or has been going on in the past, because these types of belts they actually exist for a very long time, even if the civilization goes extinct. Uh, which is technically what's going to happen to our belt, the geostationary satellites are going to be there for quite a while. 
or obviously we can look for different pollutants in the atmosphere of the planet, which is another way to look for alien life. But we'll discuss a lot of these ideas in some of the future videos on the channel. Because when it comes to these seven objects, they're definitely super exciting, but at the moment without additional observations, we cannot make any conclusions yet. And so even though it could be Dyson spheres, it could also be some kind of a dust around the star, possibly from some kind of a planetary collision, or it could be a planetary disk, or various leftovers from the disk that also emit very similar heat signatures, or maybe even some kind of an anomaly on the star's surface that might lead us to new discoveries in stellar dynamics. So basically, at least for now, as of June of 2024, we're going to make an assumption that it's maybe not Dyson spheres, kind of? even though we obviously all want this to be a Dyson Sphere. But anyway, on that note, that's kind of all I wanted to mention. And so if you want to learn more, check out all of the additional links in the description below. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, we'll come back and talk more about this once the new study comes out and someone else explains this either differently or finds additional evidence that this is maybe something super unusual. And so until then, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.